I hope you had a great week. This is Friday evening, and if you are joining us tonight, you probably have a very quiet Friday evening. Uh, if not, you're probably watching this on recording, but either way, we have a great show for you tonight. And um, I want to talk about juice feasting. We're gonna give you an update on our group. Uh, we have about 11 to 12 people in our juice feasting group. And uh, we're probably, the biggest part of the group is about 19 days into it. So we want to give you an account of our experience. A few of them uh, are gonna be on tonight talking about their experience. And I'm gonna show you the, share the experience of other individuals who were in the program, who are in the program. And, uh, but what I also wanna do is I wanna to talk to you about some benefits of juice feasting. I'm gonna to talk to you about what the quote unquote experts say uh, and go over some of the, the um, what I think uh, some of the um, uh, misunderstandings of juice feasting and detoxing in general. That's why we're doing the show uh, to give you insight in terms of how to properly detox and what the science is behind it. So. Uh, sit tight, and uh, I hope you have your cold pressed juice or smoothie with you, and uh, enjoy the show. Okay, so uh, as I said earlier, we're going to talk about juice feasting, and I want to give you some insights to juice feasting. Uh, first, I want to welcome my friend, colleague, and guest, uh, Dr. Palmer. Good Hello. evening. How's it going? Um, Dr. Palmer's probably, we're, we're day 19, right? Yeah. From the juice feast. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, she's going to share her experience. I'll share my experience. We got a couple more people going to be chiming in. They're probably coming in late tonight, but uh, either way, um, we're going to give you the insight and we also got information from uh, other members. We've talked to them. And, and so uh, we're going to go with that. Also, there she is, Desiree. Hello, Desiree. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Hello. Welcome to the show. Um, so we're going to be talking about so got another uh, happy camper and our juice feasting group here. Uh, what I want to do, uh, everybody, is just kind of talk about this whole thing of juice cleansing. And um, I'm going to throw on the little PowerPoint I uh, put together uh, quickly before the show came on. Um, and um, we have, hello, Catherine Welch. Good evening. How are you doing? It's one of our uh, mainstays here. Uh, and we're going to talk about juice cleansing. Now, this is what the experts say about juice, juice cleansing. I put experts in quotation marks because uh, there are certain individuals who are in the medical field. And actually, the, the article I pulled some of this information from uh, came from um, uh, a dietitian of one of the local hospitals here in the Texas Medical Center. And so she's uh, making some comments about uh, juice cleansing. And so I want to you know, touch base on those things uh, because um, you, you're going to read a lot of conflicting information. And what I'm going to do is give you uh, the information that we have, the facts that we have, our experience, and so on. So part one, I'm going to talk about what the experts say. And part two, I'm going to go into our experience. And then I'm going to hear from uh, some real experts, two people who are actually doing a juice feast and get their input. Because a lot of people, you know, these medical experts and dietitian experts, you know, they talk about all oh, the juice feast isn't healthy or blah, blah, blah. Uh, but oftentimes, when I, some of the ones I talk to, they've never done a juice feast and they've never observed anyone do a juice feast and they don't know the science behind it. So let's just go through some of the uh, misconceptions uh, that we may find out about a juice feast or juice cleansing, as uh, we may also uh, call it. Some people call it a juice fast. I like juice feasting. Juice cleansing, I think, is a good term as well. So what are the health risks? Uh, this is something that I think we should all be mindful of. You know, is this something healthy? You know, we go on to drink these juices only for a certain period of time. So the question is, is it healthy? So according to the experts, the resulting nutrient deficiencies, they talk about deficiencies in juice, fruit and vegetable juice is almost completely devoid of protein, healthful fats, and certain vitamins like B12 all of which are vital to health. Now, is correct that these things are vital to health? Protein, healthy fats, and B12 is vital to health. Um, what I will say is that 
juice, cold pressed juice have protein, and I'll talk about that later. Uh, juice are devoid of fats for the most part. It's trivial amounts of fats in cold pressed juice. However, some cold pressed juice will add uh, uh, ground up seeds, uh, and some will have extracted seeds that have oil in them. So you can have healthy fats in some juices, but the classic cold pressed juices are devoid of fats. Uh, they are often devoid of B12, but lots of foods are devoid of B12. B12 is uh, essentially produced by healthy gut bacteria. Uh, and many people are, are devoid of B12 for lots of reasons, not just the fact that they're drinking juice. So many people eating the standard American diet are deficient in B12. Uh, there's almost nobody that I'm aware of deficient in proteins. And many people eating a standard American diet or many of these so-called healthy diets uh, may not be getting uh, healthy fats. They may be getting processed fats and the like. And we'll talk about that uh, later. So the other concern, health concern that was raised by this health expert was that fiber is stripped out of the juice, okay? Uh, and I think Desiree's having some uh, technical problems. I'll have her come back in once her internet comes back in. Uh, fiber is stripped from the fruits and vegetables during the juicing process. So fiber is important to feeding healthy bacterial gut. That's correct. Uh, helps us feel full, keep blood sugar from going up too quickly and preventing constipation. Um, we're going to display some of these myths. Number one, fiber is important. 100% of the fiber isn't moved from the juice. There's some fiber, microfibers that make it through, depending on how, the quality of juice you have. But let's say for argument's sake, the vast majority of fiber is removed. Um, is that an absolute unhealthy thing? Um, maybe, maybe not. I'm going to go over some of those uh, aspects of uh, the importance of removing fiber, the ben potential benefits of removing fiber. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. The other concern that's raised is uh, it causes undesirable side effects. So low calorie content of most juices can elicit fatigue headaches cra and uh, cravings and dizziness. Um, and so it's true that people can have all of these symptoms on a juice feast, uh, but is it due to the low calorie content? Well, I know personally, I've been doing juice feasts for 17 years personally, and I do know that if you calculate your calories, okay, Desiree got a power back. Hey, <laughs> so, um, so if you do uh, calculate your um, uh, calories, um, I've done this in some of my juice feasts. I don't calculate calories in all of them, but you can get as many as 3,000 calories in, in uh, healthy juice. So it's not uh, necessary that uh, you're on a low calorie. In fact, a juice feast is not necessarily a starvation uh, uh, regimen. Uh, so uh, so anyway, Catherine, good evening. Uh, good evening, Sonia Anderson. Uh, hello. And so the uh, low calorie thing is a myth. Uh, you can get adequate calories. I've had up to 3,000 calories in a day on the juice feeds. So uh, you can. It may lead to muscle and bone loss, okay, because juice contains limited amount of protein. Your muscles and bones can be affected. Now, notice how these statements are made. May lead to can possibly. This is not based on any scientific evidence or any measurements of any type. This is just hypothetical conjecture. Uh, and so, personally, I've done juice feasts, you know, 20 plus days, 30 plus days, 101 days. When I was on a 101 day juice feast, I was working out on a regular basis. Uh, my strength was improving. Uh, my uh, strength in terms of weights, uh, I was able to lift heavier weights. Uh, during um, uh, Juice Feast. Um, hello, Jackie Girl, 19 Phillips uh, from Ohio. Uh, thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, and so my muscle and bones were improving on a prolonged Juice Feast. So um, this is a myth, and I've seen this with other uh, people as well. So that's one thing we've seen. So uh, so the other question that this expert raised is, do juice cleanses help with detoxifying? Uh, so one point uh, that was made, and this is a, a, a dietitian in one of the hospitals and medical center. I left the name out. Uh, maybe your diet uh, has been worse than usual, greasy foods, uh, too much alcohol, 
Uh, you feel like you need to detox and a juice cleanse sound like a perfect solution. So she makes the points, but the science tells us it's not the way to go. But then I asked the question, the science, you know, what science and what science is she referring to? There are no studies decided. Um, Sophia Murray, how are you doing? Good evening. Uh, and so the question is, what science are we talking about? Uh, but she talks about the science and so sort of like with their, you know, on the news, on, on the news media, you know, talking about the pandemic, the science, the science, but it's okay. What science, you know, what, so plus our bodies are highly effective in detoxing on their own. That's true. I agree with that statement, the science of detoxing, but then she contradicts the third bullet point. The science of detoxifying is still being researched. So don't fall into the marketing ploys that juice cleansing companies are trying to sell you. Well, I mean, we're not trying to sell. I don't own a juice cleansing company, so I'm not trying to say anything. But she clearly says here the science is still being researched. So, but then she says the science tells us not the way to go. So the science can tell us not the way to go because science is not complete on the issue. Um, healthy alternatives to juice cleansing. You know, one delicious way of potentially juicing is um, uh, you can add fiber by just making smoothies. Now, I agree, smoothies, and we actually have patients that do smoothie feeds as well as juice feeds. Um, and also, uh, it's a great way to get your recommended daily servings of fruits and veggies. Uh, even better though, eat your fruits and veggies whole, which also helps you feel fuller longer after a meal. That's true, but I'm gonna talk about, uh, and, and with our group, uh, get their experience, gonna talk about you know, how full they're feeling or how hungry they're feeling. So, you know, we're going to get the good, the bad, and the ugly based on uh, the real experts that I'm bringing on uh, tonight. One easy way to get your veggies is to stir fry your favorites and add protein source like chicken and edamame. Okay. I don't know if Dr. Palmer has anything to say about that, but um, I think stir, a lot of people stir fry in oil. And so, you know, stir frying and oil can be a problem. Uh, we'll talk about that, uh, but I don't agree uh, with this as a good alternative to juice feasting as a cleansing. So what I'm going to do is um, go into part two later, and uh, I'm going to put this away and bring in our real experts in terms of juice feasting. What, what do you all think about those points on juice feasting uh, in terms of you know, uh, your personal experience. I mean, so first of all, they talk about, um, they talk about, you know, feeling hungry. Uh, we're, we're about 19 days in as day is day 19, right? Yeah. Okay. And, um, uh, Desiree, are you feeling famished about to pass out right now? Or can you <laughs> barely sit up in your chair? No, I feel no, I'm pretty good. A couple of days, I had a little, you know, those cravings. But um, if you keep, like I said before, if you keep your juice handy, it helps offset that. One of the things uh, I wanted to bring out when the quote about the energy level and activity, I went mm -hmm. bike riding. I normally ride about 12 to 15 miles when I do go bike riding. Mm -hmm. And I realized that, um, You've got to watch which juice you drink with those activities. So if I'm doing more of a green type juice, if I'm going to do something that exerts a lot of energy, I probably want to move more to something that has more fruit juice for the energy uh, and the sugar. Okay. Okay. So have have you done a personal comparison, biking with a after a fruit juice versus biking after a green juice, and notice a difference? Yeah. Yeah, the biking with the green juice because it has less sugar, and mm -hmm. now, like I said, you know, twelve or fifteen miles is a lot. You're gonna use a lot of energy at a pace of you know ten miles, eleven miles per hour. So when I did that, I felt um, a little. I couldn't even make the whole twelve for one, which is odd, and I felt dizzy, a little headache. So I realized next time I go, I've got to make sure I take a type of juice that has more calories in it. Mm -hmm. So the next time I went, I had more energy with that workout. So, so you have so to plan your activity. Have more, I have more energy. Mm -hmm. You got to plan your activity with the type of juice. That makes sense. So that's any input on that. I mean, in terms of uh, you've been back exercising lately. Yeah, I mean, in the mornings, I just 
do one of the beet juices because I know beets help with uh, workouts. So I haven't really veered from that. It may not be the same juice, but it has a beet in it. Um, some, you know, I, I can't say that I actually have gotten this uh, increased energy, but everything feels about the same as it did before. So, so, the surge, so waiting for the surge though. You're waiting for the surge. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you know, it's funny. Um, I don't know if you've gotten your surge yet, Desiree. It, it's odd. It's day 19. I haven't gotten my surge yet either. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm not necessarily weaker, but um, I think to Desiree's point, I'm drinking more. My juices are more on the vegetable side than the fruit side. And that may have, in fact, there was a time where I went, I didn't think about what you said, Daisy, but until you said it and I reflected, there was a day I did a lot of green juices and just strictly veggie juices. And I felt a bit more fatigued uh, and I slept a little bit more. And I think I detox more heavily than uh, as well. And so I think the caloric part and I think the cleansing part may be heavy with the greens uh, as well. They're supposed to be more building, mm -hmm. uh, but that's good. But 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 it's a good point you make in terms of the difference between, especially exercising the fruit of the high caloric juices uh, or not. Um, what about muscle and bone loss? You feel yourself weaker? Can you pick up as much or I mean, what? I mean, on the bicycle, Desi, would you I mean were you able to bike as fast? I guess it depends on whether you have the fruit or green juice, but. I don't consume dairy. So to me, I don't feel the difference of a muscle or, or um, bone loss. And again, a lot of the juice, a lot of the veggies contain those nutrients. So no, in that aspect. Mm -mm. Yep. Yeah. So the thing is that they, the point they talked about were the health risk. And so there was some concerns they raised um they uh also talked about now the low calorie content of most juice can cause fatigue headache cravings and dizziness now i think among our group just reflecting on our uh support sessions uh everybody all of these symptoms have been manifested and you know, people talk about cravings dizziness headaches fatigue uh and y'all feel all of these uh, anytime during i may have had some slight headaches but no, that was I didn't. first week. I think we, we were talking about those things in the first week, uh, yep. first three, three or four days. And then, you know, after that, it got bad. Yeah, passed. And so, and the thing is that it's important because, see, if so, let's say, for instance, if juice cleansing was causing all these things, if it was the major problem, then you would say, okay, if you got, you know, this much headache and dizziness and cravings on day three, on day six, you should have this much. I'll go this way, and this much. And then day 10, this much. And day 11, this much. But what y'all are saying, you had a certain amount up to day three, and then it kind of went away. Is that is that about the right act? So really, more juice feasting did not lead to more headaches, fatigue, cravings, and dizziness, but actually less. And, and that's been not only my experience over 17 years, but my experience in and, and coaching other people on juice feast is that you go through a transit period of feeling these symptoms. And so uh, these symptoms of headaches and cravings and dizziness, I'm gonna go ahead and show the screen to the group since people are just shining, chiming in, but the, the headaches you get with the, um, uh, and headaches, cravings and dizziness tend to happen early on, but the longer you go through the juice feast, these go away. And actually you start to feel more energetic uh, and what have you. Um, and then we already commented on the protein issue and whatnot. The other point they made uh, was that um, the science says it's not the way to go, but then they contradict themselves that the science is still being researched. So the science is not complete. And so we, we don't, but I'm gonna share you, it's, it's not publicated data, uh, data but um, it's our clinical observation which extends uh, extends over many years. Now, now uh -huh. Dr. Jeremy, I just wanted to say that statement where you you know that the body detoxes itself, and we we all know that we're aware of that mm -hmm. um, in a natural environment. I think you have to add that to the sentence. 
Um, because yeah. the issue is, is that we are constantly toxifying. I can say that that's the word, um, yeah. our body. So it can't detox when we're constantly putting things in that are damaging. So if nothing else, the juice gives it a little bit of a break. It may not be doing anything magic, mm -hmm. but it's giving the body a break from the things that we're putting in that could be damaging. Mm -hmm. So they can start to kind of rev up, but that's again, probably why, because these juices aren't perfect because for example, we know that these fruits and vegetables in here are probably not organic, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and I'm aware of that and I'm very much a person who usually tries to get organic things, but you know, if I'm doing it myself, yes, but if I go to the store, it's not. But just taking away the other heavier things that the body needs to digest when we're eating, I think makes a big difference um, when, when we're doing something like this. That's why water would be even more detoxifying, but with working and moving about, it's that is a big challenge. Yeah, not practical. And I think that's a good point in the sense that they do point out correctly the body can detox on its own. But the reason we don't, the reason people build up net toxic is because we're putting more junk in than the body can get rid of at any period of time. And, and you know, the statistician doesn't make that point. And that's one of the benefits of juice feasting. You alluded to fasting and cleansing. It's a time letting the body rest. And when the body is ill, uh, and I have, I have a patient right now in the hospital ICU, and, and some of the critical care team wants to give the patient tube feedings after going and cancel tube feedings. So no, she's eating uh, a certain amount. She's not eating a lot, but she's sick. I mean, she's in the ICU on drips and so on and so forth. So let's let her eat to the amount that her body allows her to. Um, the nurse said, oh, she drank a smoothie yesterday. I said, okay, that's great. So brings I have on my diet in the hospital. She's doing that. And so we let them eat to the body's satisfaction and capability. Uh, you don't have to have, you know, huge meals and, you know, 2,500 calories or 3,000 calories a day. Uh, the body will will uh, take in what it needs uh, and it's designed to do that. And But most of the time, when we're, even when we're not, quote, unquote, acutely ill, uh, we're putting in more junk than our body can clean out. And so we're building up these chronic illnesses because we don't let the body to net detoxify. Um, Catherine Welch, are you satiated? Have all the cravings cease? Propitiate uh, to the uh, proportionate to the juice you drink. How much water do you drink? Um, anybody want to handle this one? Are you say are you satiated, Desiree? Are you hungry? Are you satisfied? I'm satisfied. A lot of it is really mental. I mean. I have cravings for weird things. I don't know why. Like, for example, last week I had a craving for something salty. I don't know what, why. Just It wasn't even the food. It was just the craving of something salty. So uh, I don't know what kind of salty juice. But I've got to find a salty juice. <laughs> so You can dissolve the sea salt crystals in your juice. Or put them Someone on told me to drink pickle juice. Huh? Is it pickle juice? Well, pickle juice, uh, I don't know. Be careful pickle juice. I don't know what they do with that pickle juice. You just put a little sea salt in your regular juice. Oh, okay. I didn't think of that. Yeah, or get like a get a pure celery juice and put a little sea salt in it. Or you can put the sea salt on the tongue and flush the juice through there. And then it kind of gives you that. Because sometimes, you know, I've seen people's sodium go on the low side. I've never seen anybody go severely uh, hyponatremic, but sometimes the sodium may go on the low side. Uh, so have all you, so cravings are still there, but you're not hungry so that's the important thing how much water are y'all drinking uh proportion to the amount of juice a lot of water i drink a lot of water i like i like the sparkling waters so mm -hmm. i do drink a lot of water and that that keeps me full a lot of green tea the, something about that warm liquid in your stomach makes you feel full so i think if you're going to try this for the first time i do recommend room temperature water and the warm green tea yeah, warm green tea is very good. But I, yes, bro. In fact, all the water I drink now is room temperature, but especially in the juice feeds, it works well. And sometimes I let my juice uh, warm up to room temperature. I get tired of because I feel cold all the time. You know, mm -hmm. so I, I try to let my juice uh, 
you know, uh, warm up a little bit, uh, at least close to room temperature, not all the way there. So Tanya wants to know if it's possible to tone up or bulk up. When I did the 101 juice, 101 day juice feast, I was working out with my trainer and I was getting stronger and I was toning up. Now I wasn't getting bulkier. Uh, now, I was getting a little bulkier. Let me take that back. I was getting a little bulkier in, in the areas where I was lifting weights. I was getting a little bulkier, but it wasn't as as bulky as as you tend to get. And I suspect if I had gone longer, and lifted more, and continued to lift heavier weights, I would have built up more bulkiness. But the bulking up is a little less um, rapid, perhaps, uh, or less pronounced than perhaps if you're eating food. But I have something to say about about that one because that's. Uh -huh something that I dealt with even as a, a vegan and, you know, working out. I think what happens is that technically our body does not want to be as probably as thick as we would like it to be because we see certain things in magazines or on TV and we have a look that we want. Um, but if your body type is such that you are slim, then it's hard to bulk that up unless you're using something like, you know, proteins, taking in additional proteins to make that bulk up. And so if you're doing just juice, it's not going to bulk up um, because that's not what naturally the body would do if we weren't pushing it to do that, even if we are working out. So I think that would be hard. I think you can tone, but bulking is another push. I want to add something too on that too. From my experience, I work out quite a bit what I appreciate more is not bulking up, but because you're juicing and you're more lean, I see more definition. When I say definition, think of that that muscle anatomy chart. So you can see more of the muscle striation and the definition come out more than just bulking up. So if you appreciate and you're looking for that more defined cut look, you're going to get that better. Yep, I agree. And, and you definitely get that with the juice feast. And that was my experience. And that's, and that was all the part of the question that uh, Sonia asked, uh, possible tone of bulk up. And tone up is really more so than bulk up, is I think mm -hmm. the consensus among this group of experts. Um, I wanted to also comment on the craving. So uh, mine has been like a roller coaster. So, you know, normally I don't think about uh, certain things that much. And in the first week after I got over day three, I didn't really think about it. But then the craving kind of has sneak back in and you know just silly things that i don't even eat on a normal basis are like coming up in my mind um you know like donuts and vegan donuts of course but uh, <laughs> you know just silly stuff and these are not things that i eat on a regular basis but my mind be, be, it feels like because i can't have it this is when i want to have it and my mind so it's a it's a mind it's a mental game so that makes you feel like uh, when I come off of this, I can't wait because I know I'm going to have some donuts. I'm going to have some chips. I'm not going to do that because obviously that, that kind of goes against the whole point. But if your mind plays that game with you. Yeah, that's true. Now, I, I do the same. I crave foods. I start to create different raw vegan meals because whenever I come off a of juice feast, um, I always try to say, okay, how's my diet going to improve for me? I'm not going to go back to where I was. So what, what, even if it's a very small change, I'll come off and I'll leave something out forever. And, and over the 17 years I've done these juice feasts uh, throughout the year, each time, you know, because I did my, I came into eating plant-based food on a 33-day juice feast. This is my introduction. My coach, John Rose here in the Houston area, you know, coached me on juice feasting. And um, that's that's my introduction to, to plant based nutrition and uh, and then juice feasting raw foods and the like. And so when I would juice feast every year, I, you know, after the first juice feast, oh, this is great. Vegan diet's easy. So I left, you know, the standard American diet alone. But then I, ate, you know, regular vegan food and some vegan junk food, which was great. It was easy to follow that. But then I juice feast again and I said, wow, I feel great. And it's different than that. So what else am I going to cut out? So I kept cutting things out. And so it's a way to sort of detox and improve your, your diet over time or any form of detox can do that. And we're going to talk about the whole concept of it in later shows, but, but it certainly works out pretty well in that regard. Um, so um, Sonia talked about, uh, so she started a 40 hour initial water fast 
and didn't think it was ideal for her. Then uh, resting heart rate went up. Then for 30 tiles, she did juice feasting. Then it was easy, only uh, did it for three days total. Well, I'll just say only, you know, you did it for three days. You know, water fasting, you want to be observed. Sometimes you may not be drinking enough. And so that could have been why the heart rate went up. Uh, there is a water fasting clinic uh, in the U.S. and, and Santa Rosa, uh, California. There may be others around, too. That's the one I know about. There are probably others because they train other people to go and start in other parts of the country. Uh, and they water fast people up to 40 days. And so, of course, it's a, a facility. You observe you. They draw labs and that type of thing. And so it's safe. And to have you at rest, juice feasting approximate water fasting because you get you remove toxins and you allow the body to rest, but you're nourishing the body. You're getting the calories, as uh, Desiree pointed out, and uh, and Celeste pointed out. And so you can bike ride, you can go to work, you can do the things. So it's more practical while you're still resting your GI system and you're not uh, burning fiber or any other foods or the like. And so, so these are the other things. So a couple of other points here that they raise. Um, and I'm not going to go through all of these again, but um, one delicious way to potentially benefit is to do smoothie form. Smoothies are a healthy way. You can detox. Um, but what I will say is that juice feasting, because you're removing the fiber, you're allowing the body to rest. You're allowing the GI system to rest. The purpose is to allow the body to rest. We understand the benefits of fiber. We're not saying get rid of fiber forever. This is a cleansing process. This is a it's almost like saying, OK, I'm going to go and uh, jog a mile for exercise while well, you're running and you're breathing hard and, you know, you're putting your body through a stressful period to kind of, you know, improve your circulation, improve your strength, cardiovascular endurance and all these things. But, you know, there are benefits to running, but there's also, well, I mean, you're putting stress on your knees and your ankles and you're breathing hard. You're, you're not meant to be running forever. You can't run forever, but you're running for a certain period of time and then you stop and you rest. That's the thing with the juice feast. You cleanse and then you stop. You, 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 so this cleansing period is a cleansing, resting period for the body. Then you go back to eating a healthy diet with the fiber and the light. But the purpose is to help clean the trash out of the system, allow the body to clean the trash out of the system while not putting more trash in. The easiest way to not put trash in is to totally strip everything away from the food except the hydration, the phytochemicals, micronutrients, proteins that's in the juice. That's the best way to do it. Even the fiber, you know, although fiber is good for you, it takes some burden of, of breaking down. So that's why you remove the fiber. However, smoothies are good as well. You can also do a smoothie detox. This last point here I just want to jump to stir fry. Most people put oil in their foods and they stir fry. And I know from clinical experience, this is not a healthy way to eat. Uh, stir frying is sort of a, a politically correct way of deep frying. Uh, it's, you know, you've got fried cooked oils and it's rancid and it's not very healthy. So stir frying is very good. Uh, adding chicken. Chicken has lots of hormones, bacteria uh, that raises in a certain way that's harmful. It increases uh, insulin resistance. Uh, edamame can be uh, is good if eaten the right way, uh, but the the chicken I don't agree with, and the stir fry I don't agree with. So, all of those things are are problematic. So, what I want to do is uh, with our guests on is go to part two, and just talk about our experience. Much of what you heard uh, just now uh, um, from my two guest experts on juice feasting. I mean, of course, guys, you are experts on juice feast, feasting. Uh, and so um, I want to add you. And we have another expert trying to come in. I think it's uh, Mike Goss. I'm going to bring him in. Uh, Mike, is your camera working? Uh, I think so. Let's, Let's see. I can't, we can't see you. We can hear you. You can't see me? That's probably a good thing. But let me see if I can turn it over here. Let's what? see here. Hey, I got to show my ugly face so you can come and join the party. <laughs> it's gonna right, be cool. let's see here. Oh, there you go. All right. All right. So, yeah, we have another, a third expert here. So, so um, Mike Goss, um, it's Reverend Mike Goss online. You're in and out. Your your lights in and out, but that's that's okay. We'll hear you if we don't see you. Okay. Uh, we've been talking about what the quote unquote experts talk about juice feasting. We're going over some of the 
the um, uh, what I like to call uh, misconceptions of juice feasting by the medical community. Uh, and so we were sharing our personal experience uh, with that. But but let me just share with you what we're doing on, uh, and I'm just gonna go and, um, so uh, the juice feasting in our experience, uh, as we talked about, you wanna give your digestive system a rest, decrease energy for digestion, I pointed that out, uh, rest for inflamed bowels, a lot of patients we've seen with inflammatory bowel disease uh, who come in, we need to detox them. And they, you know, their bowels are messed up, the enzymes, their gut flora is messed up to a certain point. They don't tolerate eating vegetables to any extent, uh, certainly not whole raw vegetables, uh, and many of them don't tolerate even cooked vegetables. So we will put them on either raw smoothies or juice. Uh, for a certain period of time to let the inflammation calm down. They can still be nourished to juice the nutrients absorbed uh, across an injured bowel, but uh, they don't have to go through the, the stress of trying to digest foods because many people's GI system has been uh, compromised severely based on the foods they've eaten over their life. Uh, and it does boost your energy. As, as we all pointed out, many of us haven't gotten our energy boost, but I can testify from personal experience over 17 years of doing it personally and observing patients, um, energy level increases usually after the first three to five days. Sometimes it takes longer as it is with us. Uh, and we've measured uh, improved energy with stress tests and things like that. So we, we know uh, clinically, both subjectively and objectively, energy level goes up. Now, we haven't published our findings, so this is a peer-reviewed published data, but this is a, a, a uh, an objective clinical experience over uh, a decade and a half. Um, how about inflammation? So uh, we've measured decreased inflammatory markers in people who are on juice feasts. Uh, they will go and um, like a lady with rheumatoid arthritis, the rheumatoid factor have gone down, C-reactive protein measurements have gone down, uh, and clinical symptoms of inflammation subside. People's joints improve. Uh, and they overall uh, had a patient who was on a juice feast and his low back pain, which he had chronically had subsided. So we know inflammation goes down. And healthy weight loss. Um, we see individuals with sustained weight loss. Uh, and then we don't see side effects in our patients with chronic illness. I had a patient with severe uh, multivessel coronary disease. He was told he needed bypass surgery. And he didn't want to do that. And he came, we, we did the basic workup and uh, we want to put him on a detox. He wants to do a juice feast. And so we monitored him doing a juice feast and he did extremely well as, as did other people. I also had a patient uh, and this falls under the hydration part as well. But uh, uh, the uh, so-called expert said that um, uh, that you uh, could not have uh, people with renal disease uh, on uh, juice cleansing. Um, and I've had a number of patients on, with renal disease on juice cleansing, uh, including one patient I recall offhand who was on dialysis. It's end-stage renal disease. He was on a 900 ml uh, uh, a day uh, fluid restriction, just a little less than a liter. And um, so he was drinking this, uh, but every morning when he had 900 ml of water, he was always thirsty. As, as he said, every morning wake up, his tongue would be so dry, it would stick to the roof of his mouth. Uh, on 14 days of raw juice feast, within the first three to four days, he felt well hydrated. Uh, his tongue was no longer sticking to the roof of his mouth. He felt more energetic, felt better on the juice feast. So he did much, much better. And uh, uh, the lab data, uh, that we drew on him, but also on other patients, uh, show uh, evidence of improved hydration, and other people have shown evidence of improved hydration. So, you know, these are the facts that we see, not just by giving some theoretical uh, discussion of uh, what juice feasting could do or would do, but this is based on on um, our clinical uh, observation. So, that's just you know it for for our uh, for our you know, objective uh, information we've seen. And of course, 
uh, I brought on two other experts with me tonight um, who I uh, think further substantiate uh, that clinical observation over time. I'm uh, trying to get Mike Goss a chance to get his uh, light uh, connected. We'll bring him back on. Um, so let's see here. So, uh, Shauna, I was just curious because I had not done the water only, but I don't plan on doing water fasting again. I love juicing. Thanks. Yeah, juice feasting is good. Now, you can do like um, a 24-hour or 36-hour water fast. I know, Sonia, you mentioned uh, 40 hours. Uh, some people may also do intermittent fasting where you can eat, say, four hours of the day, and then the other 20 hours you eat a water feast or sleep, depending on how much you sleep. So you can do intermittent fasting and water can be part of that intermittent fasting. So you don't have to do like these long, you know, uh, periods of water fasting, you know, unless you go to an institute where they can observe you. But but uh, overall, um, you can you can do it safely. I think we may have lost Mike. Hello, Mike. I'm, I'm, I'm Mike. still here. I'm kind oh, of multitasking. Okay. I'm so, missing everything, but, but keep going, Doc. You're doing good. Yeah, so let me get your take uh, real quick on juice feasting. How's it been? What day are you on, and, and how are you doing on your uh, juices? I think you're doing juices and smoothies, perhaps? Uh, uh, juice? I hadn't did any smoothies. Okay, um, juice. How are you doing? What day are you on? I'm on day 10. How's it gone for you so far? Uh, mixed. Uh, I'm still trying to find my rhythm, uh, really. Uh the key is to keep a full belly and, you know, find places, you know, I, I'm moving. So my stuff is packed up, my juicer and my, my blender is packed up. And so I've been going to, to the stores and trying to find, I went to that juice eatery that you recommended, bought a bunch of juice today, yesterday. Uh, but I'm really looking for something in the, a much larger quantity. Uh, and, you know, I bought some the other day that was, uh, where did I buy it from? It was a pineapple at Walmart, and it said cold press, but it did not say pasteurized or flash pasteurized. It had no mention of that, so yeah. I wasn't for sure if it was uh, 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 non-pasteurized. What do you think? Yeah, and the cold press usually is okay, but uh, it's best to get the ones where they say they give a little warning on there. Right. Oh, no, but uh, but but yeah, cold press should be okay. You could go to Central Market, which has a lot of juice, and any of the Whole Foods have the large quantity of juices. Which I mean, those are you know they're not pasteurized. Some may be cold pressed or pressured. Uh, so so those are a good places where you can get the large volume. Uh, the special in the little six glass bottles because they're more tea uh -huh. than otherwise yeah but how are you are you hungry or how's your energy oh my energy is good uh you know if you know you don't wake up hungry like you did normally overnight for breakfast you just got to eat something you know lunchtime you just can't wait to chow down <clears throat> that's if you stand uh saturated with the juice it, it it's it's uh you know, the more nutrition you get, it's, it's what I'm finding is the less food you need. I mean, the less, not less food you need. Well, obviously less food you need because you don't need it. Uh, it's not like you've got to have it. I mean, you've got energy, uh, you're not hungry. Uh, and so that's what I, I notice. And so, you know, I've, you know, uh, be honest, I, I, I hadn't been a hundred percent. Uh, you know, I find myself just got a chomp on something and if if it's uh, almond nuts you know something but uh but i'm fresh out of almond nuts and everything the camp cabinets are bare and so now it's just me and the juice <laughs> yeah well, no that's good i like that but you so you're saying you're feeling less hungry you wake up in the morning you're not hungry oh uh, yeah not hungry. Hungry. Right, right not even not even thinking about oh i gotta fix a big stack of pancakes <laughs> and all of that not even not even close. Oh, wow. Wow. Is, it, is that your feeling, uh, Celeste, Desiree, less hungry? Yeah. Well, I know that I, I noticed um, just you know, before the juice feast, if I um, just with being plant based, that if I eat something at night that is bready, that's why I stopped eating bread. But, you know, uh, pasta or, or something like that, 
which is technically, I guess, fits in the, under the vegan umbrella, but not um, that I'm gonna wake up the next morning super hungry. So once I took that stuff out, that heavier stuff that takes longer to digest out, mm-hmm. you don't wake up as hungry in the morning. It's not hungry. It's really probably the gut peristalsis pushing things through the gut um, that makes you feel that um, stomach cramp more so than just it being hunger. Okay, Angela Fusetti's done 37 days on a juice feast. Good job, Angela. Um, and um, she also said she'd recommend calling the manufacturer about these cold pressed juices. I think that's a good idea. Um, and um, and certainly through small juiceries, you can you know inquire with the owner. Usually, the owner is somewhere nearby, and you can inquire about that. So so as we wrap up, what 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 is everybody's take on this? You know, the experts say juice feasting. Uh, it's not safe. It's not recommended. Uh, you know, you got to be too hungry, uh, so on and so forth. Um, you know, those are the so-called experts. You guys are real experts. You know, a lot of people, you know, in, in my field, I, I read a bunch of cardiologists says, well, juice is terrible, but none of them done a juice feast. Uh, <coughs> some experts and the so-called experts in the plant-based community says smoothies and juice are not good, but they... They've never done extended juice feces or observed patients extended juice feces. So, so, you know, they don't have the personal experience. You guys do. So you're my experts tonight. What what do you say about juice feasting? Well, you know, the thing that, that kind of keeps me motivated with it is, is that uh, what you explained the other week is that the body has time to rest and, well, uh, not spend so much energy trying to digest food as it is trying to repair cells. Uh, and, and so that's, that's what keeps me, me motivated. And, and, and what I look at is the more food you eat, <clears throat> the more you weigh, and the more you weigh, the more le- less healthy you are. Mm-hmm. And so I see it, you know, a double benefit of it. The body has time to, uh, focus on repairing cells and, uh, and you're not stressing it out with, uh, with these big meals. That, that I'm so accustomed to. So I, 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 I'm all in. I, man, 37 days, man, that's remarkable. I don't know yeah. how you, how you make it. You know, <laughs> how how much, how much you 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 figure up your, your juice bill is a week? <laughs> I don't know. It's hard to say. But but you know, you're gonna find out. Don't worry, Desiree. What are your final words? What's your, you know, again, what's your now expert opinion on juice feasting? You're muted. Oh, you're muted. Oh, Desi, you're muted. I find out within the first two to three days, you automatically drop five to seven pounds. This isn't body weight. That's all that stuff that's in your intestine and stomach. So you can imagine if you pick up a five pound weight and think that's been in your body every day consistently. So kind of like that clogged pipe in the Drano commercial. And you just finally flushed five pounds is a lot of weight. It's right. to be internally holding holding around, I mean, walking around with it. So just right there, I just, I feel good and so much better that I've got rid of five pounds of literally crap. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 we all have that experience and, and the so-called experts didn't point that out. Celeste, what are your final words? Um, for me, it's been more of a, a mental journey um, because the physical side, you know, I agree with what everybody is saying. Um, this These last two weeks have been a particularly difficult emotional week for me. I experienced a loss. Um, and so what I know now with doing this, that comfort eating is something that we, a lot of us do. And it's not that I'm hungry. It's just that I want something to make me feel better. And I, you know, if I could eat the almonds or cause I'm an almond and I'm a pistachio person eating those, if I could get those, then I feel like that would comfort me in that time. But you know, I'm doing the feast and I want to stay um, on board. So I, I can't do that. So I have to talk to myself about not letting the external, these external cravings kind of take over in this situation. So it's, it's definitely more of a, a, a mental play on being strong and being disciplined and getting to the next level. 
So you know, probably say it's a mental detox as much as it is a physical detox. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mental craving. Wow, that's impressive. So there you have it. I'll see you guys backstage. You guys have heard it from the real experts. And you know what I wanted to do tonight is give you insight into this concept of juice cleansing. You know we're all on day you know twelve to fifteen to nineteen. The 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 group started nineteen days ago. We had some people join us. Um, but but what you heard tonight from my experts on is consistent with what you know other members in the group has expressed uh, overall an improvement in how they feel, decrease in hunger increase in energy. Some people are lulling in energy, haven't felt that burst yet, but none of us are feeling wiped out or are or, or extremely fatigued. In fact, our energy level is either equal to slightly greater. It does wax and wane, sometimes sleep longer and so on. But uh, according to the experts, in addition to what our clinical experience and observation has been, juice feasting not only is safe, but very effective uh, and, 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 and beneficial. Uh, in terms of um, being a healthy part of your health journey. So this is where we are right now. Uh, we will uh, come back in and chime in with uh, other members of the group later on and see how our journey goes. Um, and so I also want to mention that uh, this show, Detox Me Now, will move to Wednesday evenings at 745. I'm going to move away from Fridays. Fridays are pre-weekend day. And it's also a challenge for me coming out of the clinic. So I'm going to move it to uh, Wednesday evening at 745. So our next show will be next Wednesday. I look forward to seeing you then. Uh, we'll be talking about other aspects of uh, detox. We'll talk about things like inflammation and oxidative stress. These are the areas that we're trying to remove when we're detoxing. And uh, we'll talk about how the detox can uh, affect these things. So until next time. Uh, I will see you and uh, look forward to your uh, sharing your detox journeys uh, in the chat room. Uh, also join us Monday evening at um, 730 at, for Fresh, Natural and Live. We'll be talking about aspects of uh, nutritional supplements and how we apply supplements to certain health conditions. So join us at 730 on Fresh, Natural Live right here on the Beyond the, the uh, Script uh, channel.